We have created this training video using a format that contributes to enhanced and accelerated learning. However, we recognize some trainers will want to move freely throughout the video in order to better support their training schedules and processes. Therefore, the following time code markers are provided for the trainer who wishes to move forward or backward in the video to a specific training section. Every day, thousands of EMS personnel respond to emergencies involving traumatic pelvic injury. These pelvic fractures have a mortality rate of between 5 and 50 percent due in part to the significant hemorrhage that may occur in the pelvis with minimal external signs. Achieving pelvic stabilization and reducing the pain caused by a pelvic injury is difficult to achieve outside of the hospital environment. Left untreated, pelvic injury is painful and can be lethal. In trauma patients that have suspected pelvic fracture and possible internal bleeding, EMS providers need rapid access to a non-invasive, life-saving pelvic stabilization device that can be applied quickly and easily in any environment. That device is Ping Medical's T-Pod Responder. The T-Pod Responder pelvic stabilization device with its patented circumferential tightening mechanism provides the most effective means of stabilizing injuries to the pelvis while mitigating pain and reducing blood loss from pelvic injuries which may include pelvic fractures. The T-Pod Responder is lightweight and compact. The T-Pod Responder comes packaged in a sealed durable Mylar bag complete with step-by-step -step instructions. The package is quick opening lightweight, and easily fits in any aid bag. Efficient. The mechanical advantage pulley system can be easily closed with one hand. This makes the application of the T-Pod responder possible when only one provider is available on the scene. Easy to use. The T-Pod responder can be applied under any conditions, in any environment, working in moving vehicles, in confined spaces, and under conditions of limited visibility. Rapid deployment. The adjustment mechanism, or patented pulley system, allows for pelvic stabilization in seconds. Compatible. The T-Pod responder is latex-free and it is 100% radiolucent and non-metallic, making it completely X-ray, MRI, and CT scan compatible. Adjustable. The T-Pod responder's belt can be folded or cut to fit the patient. For larger patients, two belts can be linked together using the hook and loop surfaces. This highly adjustable system allows the responder to provide circumferential compression to virtually any size patient. Before we learn the application steps, let's familiarize ourselves with the important nomenclature of the T-Pod responder so that we can know how to navigate our way around the device. The X-ray detection tab, or XRD tab, shown here. This is the only feature of the T-Pod responder that will be visible during X-ray, MRI, or CT scans. Removing a pelvic stabilization device to facilitate medical treatment or imagery can be painful and dangerous. With the T-Pod responder, removing the device is not necessary. The tab is hook and loop backed, so it can easily be moved to the optimal position at any time the T-Pod is in use. The T-Pod belt is light, flexible, and malleable, easily forming to the patient's shape as it compresses around the pelvis, providing symmetric pressure. The application history label is printed with typical categories of necessary data. The provider can use permanent markers to annotate the application time and any reapplication times following adjustments. When used, this feature ensures an accurate record of the T-Pod responder's application timeline. The pull tab is an ergonomically designed handle, complete with finger loop, that allows the provider to securely pull the adjustment cord. This engages the adjustment pulley mechanism to evenly close the belt opening and circumferentially compress the pelvis. The locking hooks. Seen here are four small composite hooks molded into the surface of the adjustment mechanism. These hooks are used to store and secure the 36 inch or 91 centimeter long cord of the adjustment mechanism. Properly used, they prevent accidental loss of circumferential pressure due to rapid and uncontrolled loosening of the adjustment mechanism. They are necessary to shorten the adjustment cord so that the pull tab can be safely secured to the front of the adjustment mechanism. The adjustment cord guides, seen here, bring the two adjustment cords together and guide them as the provider tightens the mechanism. These guides are an application reference point that you will learn in the training portion of this video. 
Make a mental note on their location relative to the device as you will be asked to reference them during the application protocol. The mechanical advantage pulley system ensures a simultaneous circumferential compression of the pelvis requiring a minimal application of force on the part of the provider. The patented pulley system does the difficult work for the provider and unlike some devices, this system allows the provider to apply a wide spectrum of pressure, gauging the exact amount necessary to effectively compress the patient's pelvis. Application talk through. The application of the teapot responder is a simple six-step procedure. However, before we learn the steps in sequence, let's talk through the entire procedure to familiarize you with some of the finer points of the application. Think about number one, the position, number two, placement, three, compression, four, lock and secure, and five, record and transport. These concepts will be explained in detail and later will directly relate them to the application steps. If the decision is made for pelvic stabilization, your first consideration in the application protocol is position, meaning how to position yourself relative to the patient and how the patient will be positioned before the application begins. As always, you must follow the guidance and establish protocols of your direct medical oversight. That supersedes any instruction given here. Whenever possible, and if your protocols permit, you should assess digital pulse and nerve sensation in the patient before and after applying the teapot responder. If so directed, it is important to assess critical findings before and after each intervention. Optimally, the patient should be positioned supined or flat on their back. You should begin work perpendicular to the patient, at the patient's pelvis, and optimally, if you can, it is best to position yourself with your dominant hand superior or toward the patient's head. Clear away any loose clothing or gear that could impede your access to the patient's pelvic region. Understand you're going to wrap the teapot belt completely around the patient's pelvis and then circumferentially compress. Therefore, do what is necessary to give yourself a clear application pathway by removing gear, excess clothing, or debris. Next, think placement. Open the Mylar package, remove the teapot device, and immediately separate the adjustment mechanism and the belt. Place the adjustment mechanism on the patient's chest with the adjustment cord guides closest to you. This ensures that pull tab will be close to you and that the action necessary to complete the compression will be pulling toward you. Pick up the belt and orient it. The textured side faces the patient. The hook and loop side faces out. With the belt oriented, hold one end in your dominant hand. Use the relief typically formed by the curvature of the lumbar spine on the patient. And using your dominant hand, guide the pelt under the patient and reach across the patient with your non-dominant hand to capture and position the belt. You want to pull the amount you visually estimate will allow you to wrap the belt around the patient, leaving the end three to four inches short of the patient's midline. This initial measurement allows you to bring the standing end, or the end closest to you, up and around the patient. You trim this end of the belt again three to four inches from the midline. When complete, you should have a six to eight inch gap relative to the midline. This gap will be closed by the adjustment mechanism, and it is the closing of this gap that will provide the circumferential compression of the pelvis. The iliac crest of the patient should be aligned with the upper superior edge of the belt. If you cannot identify this anatomical landmark, try using the patient's greater trochanters. The trochanters are typically more difficult to acquire. However, if you must use this reference point, the belt should be positioned so that the greater trochanters are aligned with the center of the belt, between the superior, upper, and inferior, lower edges of the belt. In some cases, it may be necessary to gently roll the patient in order to correctly position the belt. When the belt is properly positioned, check for the iliac crest and the upper edge alignment, or look for the greater trochanter alignment and then bring the standing end of the belt up and over the patient. Optimally, you should cut the belt with trauma shears or, if necessary, a blade, leaving the standing end three to four inches short of the patient's midline, just as you did on the opposite end of the belt. If for some reason you cannot trim the belt, you can still complete the application by folding the standing end of the belt back under itself as shown here. 
Holding the belt with your non-dominant hand, pick up the adjustment mechanism and position it so that the adjustment cord guides are closest to you. You will have the most control if you position the adjustment mechanism with the distal portion anchored first. Now align the front edge of the adjustment pulleys with the leading edge of the belt, as shown in this example. Holding the distal end of the adjustment mechanism with your non-dominant hand, pull the mechanism toward you and lay the mechanism onto the belt. Again, the device is properly aligned when you have the front edges of the pulleys aligned with the leading or trimmed or folded edges of the belt. Simply lift it off the belt and repeat the placement steps until you have the device aligned as instructed. Double check the hook and loop of the adjustment mechanism, applying even pressure to be certain it is securely anchored and ready for compression. Grasp the pull tab in your dominant hand and do not release it until the compression movement is completed and the adjustment cord is locked and secure. This allows you to maintain positive control of the pull tab and cord, preventing unnecessary tangles or twisting. Your next consideration is compression. Using even pressure, pull toward you with the pull tab and observe as the adjustment pulleys close the gap and apply circumferential compression. Apply circumferential pressure until the belt is tight. The amount of pressure required to stabilize the pelvis will vary. The adjustment pulleys allow the provider to apply exactly the amount of force they deem necessary. Once the pelvis is stabilized, you can lock and secure the teapot. Do this while keeping the pull tab in your dominant hand and while maintaining constant pressure. Use your non-dominant hand to guide the adjustment cord into the locking hooks as shown here. Regardless of direction, clockwise or counterclockwise, maintain pressure on the pull tab and guide the cord into the locking hooks until the pull tab is brought to within six inches of the adjustment mechanism. Now secure the pull tab to the adjustment mechanism using the hook and loop backing. Your final step is to record the application time on the application history label. Application Steps this portion of the training video demonstrates all of the application steps in sequence. Step 1. Position. Position the patient. Position yourself relative to the patient. Step 2. Placement. Prepare the application pathway by clearing away excess clothing, gear, or debris. Unpack the teapot responder, separate, and set the components within easy reach. Position the teapot belt by sliding the belt under the lumbar spine of the patient. Now check the length. You want to leave 3 to 4 inches between the end of the belt and the patient's midline. Pull the belt toward the patient's feet. It may be necessary to gently roll the patient to help position the belt. Adjust the position of the belt relative to one of two anatomical landmarks. First, use the upper iliac crest of the patient, and if for some reason this is not possible, try using the greater trochanters. The top edge of the belt must be aligned with the upper iliac crest, or the trochanters must be positioned relative to the middle of the belt. Once positioned, trim the belt to fit using trauma shears or, if necessary, a blade. Cut the near end of the belt, leaving 3 to 4 inches from the midline, just as you did for the opposite side. Once the belt is trimmed, hold the belt with your non-dominant hand and pick up the adjustment mechanism in your dominant hand to position it. Attach the far end of the belt first. Do this by laying the adjustment mechanism so that the leading edge of the mechanical advantage pulley system matches the leading edge of the far side of the belt. Holding the belt and mechanism with your non-dominant hand, pull the mechanism toward you and lay it down on the near side belt. Now check the placement of the mechanism and the belt. If not satisfied, remove and replace the mechanism. If satisfied, move to step three, compression. Pull the pull tab toward you. Use even pulling force. Use your non-dominant hand to guide and monitor the application of the circumferential pressure. When the pulley system has closed the six to eight inch gap, or if you feel the pelvis is stabilized, then begin the next step. Step four is to lock and secure the teapot adjustment mechanism. 
Maintain constant pressure on the pulley system by keeping the pull tab in your dominant hand. Do not release the pull tab under any circumstances. Guide the adjustment cord into the locking hooks while you move the cord in a clockwise or counterclockwise direction. Stop wrapping the cord when the pull tab is 6 to 8 inches from the surface of the adjustment mechanism. Using the hook and loop backing on the pull tab, secure it to the surface of the mechanism. And step 5, record the time of the application on the application history label. Reapplication Considerations Occasionally, medical providers may want to inspect the patient's skin integrity or perform other assessments. This will require the release of the circumferential pressure to permit inspection and the reapplication of the T-pod responder and the reapplication of circumferential pressure. Simply reverse the process using your dominant hand, grasp and lift the pull tab, and maintain pressure and positive control of the tab and cord. Using your non-dominant hand, guide the cord as you detach from the locking hooks. Lift the attachment mechanism on the far side, lifting and pulling the adjustment mechanism toward you. Keep positive control of the entire mechanism, cord and tab. Set the mechanism out of the way and conduct your inspection. When complete, set the adjustment mechanism down on the top of the belt and secure the hook and loop surfaces. Now grasp the pull tab in your dominant hand and pull toward you, applying even pressure. Using your non-dominant hand, guide the adjustment cord into the locking hooks in a clockwise or counterclockwise direction. Stop wrapping when you are 6 to 8 inches from the surface of the adjustment mechanism. Secure the pull tab to the belt. Record the reapplication time on the application history label. At a minimum, circumferential compression should be released every 12 hours to check for skin integrity and provide wound care as necessary. Ping Medical's T-Pod Responder provides safe, secure, and effective stabilization treatment for pelvic injuries and possible pelvic fractures. Independent studies have confirmed the T-Pod Responder's effectiveness in binding the pelvis, reducing blood loss, and lowering complications associated with the injury. Clinical Use Warning Reuse of the T-Pod Responder is not recommended once it has been used on an injured person due to the potential for cross-contamination. Serious injury or death may result. Why T-Pod Responder? Pelvic fractures have a mortality rate of 5 to 50 percent due mainly in part to the significant hemorrhage that may occur in the pelvis with minimal external signs. Achieving pelvic stabilization and reducing pain from a pelvic injury is difficult to achieve outside of the hospital environment. The T-Pod Responder is a non-invasive, life-saving pelvic stabilization device that can be applied in any environment. Considerations If an obese patient requires pelvic stabilization utilizing the T-Pod Responder, Two belts can be combined using one power unit as an extender and the other as the pulley and tightening mechanism. Monitor pulse and blood pressure in accordance with your organizational protocols. The T-Pod responder should be replaced when soiled or after every 24 hours of continuous use. Place Foley catheters prior to the application as needed. Children under 50 pounds or 23 kilograms may be too small to obtain the six-inch gap needed for closure.